Hi, I'm Dr. John Parker. Today with my wife, Dr. Alexa Parker, we're going to go through how we work with people from a functional standpoint for their thyroid condition. We work with people that have hyperthyroid, hypothyroid, Hashimoto's autoimmune thyroid. And most commonly in the United States, if you have a thyroid condition, you probably statistically have an autoimmune condition known as Hashimoto's. So we're going to go through today how to identify that, different kind of testing, what do we have to look for to help improve your functional health overall? Because if you have these problems, it's not just a thyroid condition. So I'm a chiropractor. I've been practicing for, 15, for 14 years now. Uh, practice, our practice is located, my, mine and my wife's practice, we're in uh, Tampa, we're in South Tampa. Uh, I'm a member of Pastoral Medical Society. The benefit of that is I only accept patients through that. It protects your rights and privacies in healthcare. Uh, I have a bachelor's of science degree in electrical engineering from the University of West Florida here in Florida. I've studied functional blood chemistry, functional nutrition, functional neurotransmitters, functional endocrinology, and functional blood lab work from Dr. Tatis Karazian, as well as Apex Energetics. I've got 300 plus hours in postgraduate work from the Carrick Institute of Functional Neurology, it's Carrick Institute of Postgraduate Education. And I practice also in addition to running labs on people, we do kinesiology testing, quantum reflex analysis, which I learned through Premier Research Labs, phenomenal nutritional products. So we're gonna start off with, what is the thyroid gland? The thyroid gland sits in the front of the neck, right in here, okay? That gland really helps set your metabolism down to every cell in your body. It, every cell in your body has thyroid receptors, thyroid hormone receptors. If that gland malfunctions, people start having a myriad of symptoms. And we're going to go why they're having some malfunctions, because it's usually not just that the gland's not working. The thyroid is known as the shield. Uh, it sets your body's speed limit. It sp sets the speed, the metabolism of the body. When you get sick, it revs up your engine of the immune system. It speeds up things. If you're stressed, it can really start putting the brakes on things so you don't blow a gasket. It's very part of the really complex endocrine system. So I want to stop right there and explain what is the endocrine system. The endocrine system takes information from our brain, electrical impulses, and sends it to the pituitary gland, which is the master control system of your endocrine system. That master control system then takes that electrical energy and turns it into chemical information. So it's very dynamic. That endocrine system is all just from hormones in general. It's very complex. It has a lot of feedback loops. So if the thyroid gland gets sluggish, people start having symptoms, but it can also affect different areas of the body. It can affect bone metabolism, GI function, gastrointestinal function, growth hormones, fat burning, insulin and glucose metabolism, how many people have sugar regulation issues? Tremendous. Cholesterol. Look at the number of people that have cholesterol issues in the United States, and they're just putting them on a cholesterol med, when it really is they may be having problems in their endocrine system in general. It can affect brain chemistry, reproduction, progesterone production, estrogen metabolism, adrenal hormones, liver detoxification, stomach acid production, protein metabolism, body heat and hot flashes, anemias, and even affect the heart. It's an intricate web of interaction, and most people are just getting a replacement hormone, and when you look at the ramifications of if things aren't working properly, it's a much bigger picture. That's why the majority of people who come see me, their big complaint is, I've been on replacement hormone, Synthroid Levothyroxin, and I don't feel any better. And this is the reason, is it's more than... So, do you have any of the following symptoms? Fatigue, weight gain, depression, itchy dry skin, real, real big sign of hypothyroidism, dry, brittle hair. Women tell me all the time they're so much happier when we get done with their care, helping them restore their function, and they, their hair comes back. Hair loss, constipation, morning headaches, slow wound healing. 
Those are all signs of hypothyroidism. Hyperthyroidism, racing heart, anxiety, nervousness, inward trembling. Okay, a lot of people have that inward trembling and they go see places. They seek help and people make them feel like it's all in their head. And real, the real realization is there's a thyroid issue going on. Insomnia, night sweats, and difficulty gaining weight. Those are hyperthyroid symptoms. Now here's the kicker. If you have Hashimoto's thyroiditis, which is an autoimmune attack against your thyroid, you can have mixed sim symptoms. And that's one thing that people never realize until we talk about it is you can have symptoms of hyper and hypo because it's, the immune system is attacking and destroying the thyroid tissue and it can go in burst in cycles. Um, commonly, it's about 90% of all the thyroid uh, conditions in the United States um, are uh, Hashimoto's and it leads to hypothyroidism. It burns out the things, burns the thyroid out. It affects one in 10 women. Now here's the big kicker. 80% of the people that have one type of autoimmune problem, such as Hashimoto's, and we measure that in blood work, they have tissue attack against other, they have attack from their immune system against other tissue. So it can be attacking your immune system, can be attacking brain tissue, cerebellum. That's one area that gets attacked commonly. It can have gut ramifications. It can show up as skin problems like psoriasis. They have a ton of different things that can be related all the way down into peripheral neuropathies and multiple sclerosis, which can commonly be all linked to the same thing. They have an imbalance in their immune system. This is the most complicated slide I'm going to go over when I go through this. But I want people to understand, compared to how they're being tested, what are the mechanisms and physiology of the thyroid and uh, the pituitary gland. It all starts in the brain. Your brain sends signals to the pituitary gland to release TSH. Very, people always come to my office and they know TSH because that's what they're getting tested for. Your thyroid gland makes T4 and T3. Most people get tested for TSH and T4. And that's because in a replacement hormone model, they just want to monitor this loop to make sure that they have enough of thyroid hormone in your system, replacement-wise. Your thyroid gland makes 97% T4 and 3% uh, T3. T3 is a more readily available form of thyroid hormones. Your body has to do less conversion to use it. T4 takes a lot of conversion. There's a reason for that. If you made a ton of readily accessible thyroid hormone, you'd have a heart attack. You'd have racing heart to the point it's out of control and you'd actually, you'd actually die. So hormones are very small amounts and very powerful. So what happens is T4 gets on thyroid binding globulin protein, which is a carrier system, a taxi cab, to carry that around to every cell in your body. Now what happens is T4 goes to the liver and gets converted to T3. 60% of the conversion of your thyroid hormone output has to be effectively converted and delivered to a usable form. Well, how many people have good functioning livers? We have toxic burden, we're overwhelmed with with all kinds of chemical toxicities, environmental toxicities, and it doesn't function very well. So most of the people I work with with thyroid conditions, I already know we're gonna run some labs, we're gonna measure their liver enzymes, but we're gonna to work to improve their functional health. 20% gets converted from T4 to T3 in the gut. So how many people with thyroid conditions are exhibiting gut issues? So the problem is, if you're only getting monitored by your doctor, TSH and T4 for a replacement, it never looks at the mechanisms that are truly going wrong and why you're feeling bad. It comes off, it gets off of the bus, and goes to a receptor site at every cell for T3 to be used. 
So just measuring TSH and T4, it gives you no picture on what's going on wrong or how to get better. The other thing is there's an enzyme in your, that helps your thyroid gland work. Thyroid peroxidase is the name of that enzyme. Your immune system, if you have Hashimoto's, attacks that enzyme. And it will show up on your blood test as positive thyroid peroxidase. If we see TPO antibodies that are positive, you don't have a thyroid problem, you have an autoimmune problem. And it's attacking your thyroid. There's about six main patterns of thyroid issues, and only one of them is primary hypothyroidism, which is what people would have a replacement hormone for. So let's look at a couple other things. The brain sends signals to the pituitary gland, to the adrenal gland. Your adrenals release your stress hormone. Your brain sends signals to the pituitary gland for your hormones. The brain sends signals to the pituitary gland for growth hormones. So the big picture is you can have problems in your adrenals with chronic stress affecting the pituitary gland, which affects your thyroid output. So it can be really complicated. The good news is you don't have to understand very much about this for me to help you. We run tests to look and identify what areas aren't working. We supplement you appropriately, such as if your hypothalamus isn't working, communicating to the pituitary, we'd supplement to make that area work better, not just the glands. So we kind of have evolved a lot in our nutrition. So thyroid pathways, very complicated, but just replacing the measuring TSH and T4, very primitive way to look at it. And that's a 60 year old model. So the medical model, test TSH and T4. Everybody brings me to their lab work and I already know, and they're not gonna be complete enough to help you get better. We have to be better detectives than that. It, based on that, they give replacement hormone. If you still have some symptoms such as depression, they start giving things for depression. That's very linear approach versus a holistic approach. Key questions. Do you find that your, uh, your hormone replacement, your thyroid levels are always being changed? That means that it's probably autoimmune. Do you notice improvements when you first started taking your thyroid medication, but now you feel bad or worse? It's probably a Hashimoto's auto, autoimmune. It's not just a thyroid issue. It's a problem in other areas that needs to be investigated. How to functionally manage your thyroid disorder, just like that big complicated slide we just looked at a few minutes ago. You have to look at the mechanisms. You have to measure TSH, total T4, free T4, total T3, free T3, free thyroxine index, T3 uptake, TPO, thyrobinding globulins, that's autoimmunities and causing Hashimoto's, and TSH antibodies if you're having a lot of signs of hyperthyroidism. The next thing I want to talk about when we talk about lab testing. So not, not only on an insurance-based model are they not spending very much money to look at your labs, and they're running about a $40 test. That's what we see when people run that. But their statistics come into play. You remember when you were in school and they had a bell curve and things were graded on a curve? And that was good if you were a marginal student, it would kind of pull you up. And if you were a really good student, it would kind of pull you down. And so there was a range right in here in that bell curve that allowed people to get by. Now, what we learned is when you go to your lab to get your blood drawn and do your testing, they use a statistical bell curve. So what happens is people go to the lab who are sick on medications, and so they broaden the allowances, the ranges. So they don't use the functional ranges. Functional ranges are the physiological lab ranges we learned in school and what it takes to be healthy. So you might even not even, you may be feeling told that you're normal, and the fact is, they're waiting till you're abnormally low or abnormally high before they start saying you have a problem. So we, we have a, a blood nutrition software. We put our, all our blood work in. 
And not only do we care to compare it to blood ranges, we compare it to functional ranges. So we can work to get you healthier and fix things that are the processes that are really going wrong. <clears throat> For instance, were all your tests normal? Glucose, lab tests, parameters that they allow now, 65 to 110. We look at it very tight parameters and say to be healthy and have good brain function, good nerve health, you need to be 85 to 100. So this is an example of a patient came in and they were told they were normal. They fell in the traditional ranges and their labs were 73. Now I can tell you that I know that means that person has hypoglycemic episodes. Their brain runs out of fuel in between meals. They get tired, grouchy, irritable. They have problems. TSH is another one. Functional range is 1.8 to 3.0. Look at the difference, 0.3 to 5.7. And it, you could say it was 4.2 and they'd say, oh, you're fine. And the reality is you actually have a hypothyroid condition physiologically. The other one we see a lot is anemias. We also see problems with triglycerides. Thyroid dysfunction warrants comprehensive testing. The reason is the people that come see me with thyroid conditions don't have an acute condition that goes away in a couple of weeks. They have chronic health conditions that they suffer with day in, day out, year after year. They progressively get worse. Their autoimmunity develops and becomes worse. And in 10 to 15 years, they come in and say, I'm so much unhealthier. I'm so unhappy and I'm not living my life and nobody has a good answer for me. So we look for other areas. We look for things like hidden infections. We look at hidden infections will drive the autoimmune condition to uh, act up and get out of control. And one of the things we run is a Metametrics DNA stool profile. It's a very comprehensive stool DNA test and it looks at all the critters and dysbiosis and infections and parasites and bacteria that you have in your gut, yeast overgrowth, because all of those imbalances stimulate your immune system. Your immune system lives in your gut, 70% of it. We all see that now. It's even in TV ads and stuff now. An adrenal stress index. Your adrenals are a gland that sits above your kidneys. You have two of them if you have two kidneys. And they release cortisol. And cortisol is our stress survival hormone. Cortisol allows to help you fight infections they help with your sleep-wake cycle, your energy throughout the day. They give you a little boost of glucose steroid. And what happens is if you have chronic stress and hidden infections and sugar dysregulation, you're going to have problems with your adrenals. And you're going to have complaints like, I'm fatigued, I'm insomniac, I'm sleeping inappropriately, I wake up in the middle of the night at an odd time and I can't go back to sleep, I'm dragging all day. Typical things we see with people that have uh, adrenal issues. So we run that cycle throughout the day uh, one, four times in one day and we really look at a saliva test to test your cortisol rhythm and your level. Food sensitivities are one of the biggest drivers of all chronic health conditions in the United States. One of the things we see, we see when people have leaky gut, that means foods that are coming through our uh, gut system into our blood system and they're uh, inflaming or, or driving our stimulating cytokines in our immune system. The other thing is we have cross reactivities that mimic certain foods that we're allergic to. And the big one people are now seeing now is, is gluten sensitivity. It used to be people come in my office and they have no idea what I was talking about. Now they have a better understanding. Cyrex Labs is the most advanced lab in the United States for looking at gluten sensitivity. They measure antibodies, meaning they measure your immune system's reaction to gluten. And there's nine subcategories of gluten that have been identified that your immune system can react to. And of those subcategories, if you have certain ones, they can predict that you're gonna have symptoms such as psoriasis, if it's a certain part of the gluten protein you may have exercise-induced asthma. We see that a lot with kids now. They exercise, they have asthma. They have a gluten sensitivity more than likely. It can attack brain tissue and people have foggy thinking and poor, poor movement and 
problems with their cerebellum so they're not moving good. That cross-reactivity test we run, it looks at foods that are commonly associated with mimicry of gluten in their diet and their immune system might be recognized. Not only so we can remove offenders, but we can add foods that we know it's healthy for you to eat. Heavy metal burden, I'm gonna talk further about down in a couple of our slides about how we test for heavy metals. Heavy metals are so much in our environment. They're in our exposure. We have a heavy metal load. The problem with heavy metals is they displace a lot of essential elements and it also uh, really challenges your immune system because your immune system knows how to attack, to attack and fight a virus and a bacteria, a parasite. How does it deal with a foreign metal? It doesn't, it just, and it stays revved up. So our system, our approach to working with people's health is based on a, a, a functional model. Complete lab work, we run, I'm in a professional co-op, so when I run lab work on somebody, I get huge discounts, and I pass those along to you. So for instance, for $200, $300, we might get $1,500 value in blood work. So we can really figure out what's going on with you. We look at liver enzymes, glucose regulation, an expanded thyroid panel like we talked about. We look at iron saturation, conversion, serum, iron serum, vitamin D, vitamin D conversion, how you're storing it in heavy metals. We talked about the adrenals, okay? They're under stress, uh, slows down the pathway of the thyroid function if you're having problems with your adrenals. The adrenal stress test is the best way to test it. Um, it also uh, is a good prediction of hidden infections if you have adrenal fatigue and there's seven zones of ad adrenal fatigue. So the other thing is if you have adrenal fatigue, it's gonna affect your sex hormones. So sugar regulation and adrenal fatigue are the two main factors that affect sex hormones. What's the big industry out there that are promoting left and right now is low T and you know, hormone replacement and there's a reason these things are happening and if you just jack up your hormone level you're gonna have similar symptoms over time of having low hormone. This is an example of an adrenal stress index. It's a saliva test taken four times throughout the day, eight, noon, four, and midnight. And normal levels are in between the red hair. See the white, this person didn't have enough levels to get their day together until noon. They draw, they're dragging, they're groggy, they can't process, think, multiple cups of coffee. Then from noon to four, they kind of become an all-star at work. They kind of get it together, like, wow, night and day difference. And then they become the night owl because their cortisol levels are too high. So they don't go to bed till one or two. They have restless sleep and they're dragging again all day. We work to fix these rhythms using some supplementation, whether it's for the hypothalamus and the pituitary axis like we talked about, or is it the gland itself? Is it a hidden infection? inflammation, is it mental emotional stressors or sugar regulation. Functional nutrition. Based on our different lab findings, we dispense products, products to support the biochemical pathways for healing, not just for the end product. Okay? We also base our QRA analysis, our muscle testing in or energy, energy points, acupuncture points for nutritional products. Also, the nice thing about that, it allows us to test your body's response to certain nutrition. We uh, look at the gut, we look at thyroid and adrenals, liver and biliary function, anemia, sugar regulation, and autoimmune regulation. And there's nutritional supplementation for all of these areas. When do you expect Hashimoto's? Well, definitely if you have positive TPO or TPG, antibodies, there's no suspecting that you have it. But many times people's immune system is so down, it's hard to test that you get a false, false negative. But if you have symptoms of both hyper and hypo, if you're not responding to your thyroid medication, consistently high TSH, you definitely start thinking of an autoimmune attack to the gland. Complications of Hashimoto's, autoimmunity needs to be calmed down because those inflammatory cytokines 
of an overactive immune system will attack other tissue and you'll really be in a severe bad health. Increased cytokines lead to decreased uh, output of the thyroid hormone. Low thyroid hormones lead to leaky gut. Gluten sensitivity, there's a genetic t test for that too. Increased cytokines, e increased autoimmune activities, increased symptoms of hypo and hyper, and then there's molecular mimicry, whether it's the immune system attacking it because it looks like similar things. So in other words, if you have leaky gut, and it's constantly driving your immune system to be on the hunt for a certain type of, of reaction, and it comes to your thyroid tissue, if it looks similar, it's gonna start attacking it. Common thyroid symptoms, confusion, loss of memory, guilty depression, nothing brings joy, confused speech. These are thyroid symptoms of a brain issue because autoimmune attacking the thyroid or not even having enough good fuel and delivery mechanism. Hi, my name is Dr. Alexa Parker, and I'm going to be talking about um, what the triggers are to Hashimoto's, which again, as my husband described, Dr. John Parker, that this is an autoimmune attack against your thyroid, which about 90% of the patients in the United States actually have an autoimmune condition. So some of the triggers are gluten sensitivity. Actually, that's one of the triggers. Um, many patients that have thyroid disorders actually carry the gene, the HLA-DQ gene, which also is, makes them susceptible to gluten sensitivity and celiac disease. So one of the things that can promote or drive this autoimmune attack against your thyroid is gluten sensitivity. So we actually do testing to rule that out. Insulin surges. So blood sugar regulation problems. You know, many of the patients that we see, you know, they have, they're hypoglycemic or insulin resistant, even, even though, you know, they're not diabetic, even though they haven't been diagnosed as diabetic, they still have these functional swings in their blood sugar. So those insulin surges, every time that happens, that can trigger that autoimmune response against your thyroid. Gut infections, that's one of the huge things that we work with in our office. You know, we have, we've had many patients that have been to Harvard, they've been to Mayo, they've been all over, but they haven't had appropriate testing to look at the gut. Remember, you know, 80%, 70 to 80% of your immune system's in your gut. So if we have, if we, if we want to look at that, what's the best way to do it? Well, let's get a stool test. You know, let's, let's get a DNA stool test to really look at, do we have, a, you know, any gut infections such as H. pylori or staph or even parasites, which we find, I would say, in 90% of our patient base. Again, another thing that really drives that autoimmune response against the thyroid. Pregnancy, I can't tell you how many women have, have told me after pregnancy that that's when they started to develop thyroid symptoms. And one of the th reasons that is is because your immune system actually shifts during pregnancy. So it can really set the stage for, for autoimmunity to occur. The main things that we see est with estrogen surges in our office is patients that have been on hormone replacement therapy, such as estrogen therapy. That actually, estrogen actually can be, competes with your ability to bind adequate thyroid hormone. Therefore, again, we can give all the thyroid replacement in the world, but if we have excess estrogen, it can actually compete with those binding sites. So excess estrogen can actually contribute to that autoimmune thyroid disorder. Heavy metal toxicity. One of the, if, if we can't detoxify adequately, um, particularly people that have autoimmune disorders tend to have issues with methylation, which is actually the ability to detoxify in your liver. We can have trouble getting rid of, getting rid of these excess burdens to our, immu our immune system, which can then make it more difficult to, to you know, improve that condition. Iodine excess, we're going to talk a little bit more about that in a few minutes. Vitamin D polymorphisms. Uh, one of the things that we see is that patients um, actually can have difficulty absorbing adequate vitamin D, particularly people that have autoimmunity. So these are some of the triggers that actually contribute to Hashimoto. So the Th1 system is cell-to-cell -cell immunity. They're T cells. And if you think of them as an elite SWAT team that has very poor vision, they could attack anything. And then we have the, uh, the delayed aspect of our immune system, which is Th2. It's called humoral or delayed immunity. 
and that consists of B cells. These are more like detectives that identify the intruder and store information for later. So this is more of um, delayed immunity. One of the things that we have to take into consideration for people that have autoimmunity is really getting the immune system balanced. And one of the things that we see in our practice is that many times people are given herbs or supplements, you know, basically stating that this will improve your autoimmunity. And really, you have to take a lot more care in patients that have autoimmunity because certain things can really drive one, one side or the other of your immune system. For example, green tea or coffee you know, can actually contribute more towards your, your Th2 side. Therefore, if someone has a dominance of Th2, in other words, the Th2 is stronger than Th1, and we give you coffee or green tea, that can actually increase the autoimmune attack against the thyroid. So again, we have to be much more specific when we're dealing with autoimmunity and not just blindly give supplementation, but actually do the examinations and the tests to be able to determine the best way to supplement the person. So what we really, um, really try to do, you know, with autoimmune patients is really balance out both sides. So again, that may mean, you know, removing certain herbal products or certain foods that they're taking in um, that they think are healthy that are actually disrupting that immune balance. It also may mean, um, you know, giving them supplementation that actually builds the weak side. So again, really looking at the balance of the whole immune system, keeping it in regulation. There's certain supplements that have actually help to keep it in balance, but it doesn't end up um, hindering either the weak, you know, the weak side or the strong side. So again, with Hashimoto's autoimmune, the autoimmune process is this. Your thyroid, you have an autoimmune attack against your thyroid. You're on medication, okay? Most pa patients are still on medication, yet they continue to have all the same symptoms. And the reason is, is because you have an autoimmune attack against your thyroid. The medication is not going to correct the autoimmunity. Therefore, when you eat a gluten or if you have a blood sugar fluctuation or you have a gut infection or you're under a lot of stress, it continues to drive that autoimmune attack against the thyroid and eventually it'll destroy it completely. After that, it'll start looking for other tissues to destroy. You know, as my husband mentioned, Dr. John, he mentioned um, how it can affect the brain, you know, it can affect the pancreas. It can affect the joints and cause like rheumatic type pains. We see this all the time in our office. Um, so therefore, again, we've got to get to the root cause and find out why that's happening. Otherwise, your body's going to decline. And eventually, your, your MD will say, okay, let's remove the thyroid. Let's surgically remove it. Well, still, we're still stuck with the same level of health. All we're doing is removing a gland. And therefore, your immune system will continue to find other tissues to attack. So again, our goal is to restore balance to the immune system, get you on the right fuel, get you on the right foods that are going to actually build your immune system, restore your gut function, balance it out, and give you the proper supplementation. So let's not experiment. Let's actually give you the proper supplementation according to your functional ranges on your blood work that are going to work for you so that we can get you back on, on balance. And that includes balancing your blood sugar, fixing your adrenals, you know, uh, fixing any, anything related to, um, I'm sorry, anemia, getting you off the food you're sensitive to, managing stress, helping you to detoxify. These are the things we do every day in our office. Um, one of the things that we see that actually pe many patients can be misinformed, Some, they think that, you know, in regards to autoimmunity, that iodine can actually be a solution for them. However, Iodine can stimulate the enzyme, which is your TPO enzyme, that makes T4 in the gland. This can actually stimulate your immune system to attack the thyroid more. Again, realizing that we're dealing more with an autoimmune condition, we've got to look at the whole body and not just the gland. We, we can't just use a supplement in replacement for a medication either. It's not going to fix it. Going back to gluten, what is gluten? Uh, many of you have probably see, have seen more information about this in the news, um, but basically gluten is a protein that is found in many grains. So wheat, millet, barley, and rye. Um, there's a lot of gluten-free products out there. However, 
we can still have cross-contamination with that. We'll talk about that later. But basically, gluten sensitivity is um, a sensitivity to wheat, and that can happen as a result of damage to the gut lining, like leaky gut, as a result of many stresses that you've been exposed to, or because you carry the HLA-DQ gene, which can make you susceptible to actually celiac disease and gluten sensitivity. When someone who's gluten sensitive, and keep in mind there's varying levels of gluten sensitivity, there's about nine different molecules of gluten that we need to look at when we do testing to determine if you're gluten sensitive. We've had many patients uh, that have been tested for gluten sensitivity. However, a lot of times they're only checking the immediate response to gluten um, in, in the blood, and that's just one marker. There's actually nine different markers that actually show us you know, if, if you're having an immediate or delayed response to gluten. So therefore, people that are gluten sensitive, every time they eat gluten, it causes immu an immune response in the gut, which affects your ability to digest foods, and it can cause leaky gut. This inflammation can head now through the bloodstream and affect your brain and cause brain fog, concentration issues, focus problems. You know, many of you in our patient base have talked about brain fog and, you know, depression, anxiety. A lot of that has to do with leaky gut, you know, having an, an immune response in the, in the gut as well as into the brain. So this is also one of the things that's going to really trigger the thyroid gland to malfunction and cause autoimmunity. Um, there's many studies about gluten sensitivity and how it can actually cause neurological damage in the body. But essentially, there's a, there's a really large connection between gluten sensitivity and thyroid autoimmunity. But there's also much research about neurological damage um, in regards to you know, uh, movement disorders and you know, balance disorders. Uh, I've seen many patients, again, that have had problems with balance and concentration and movement. And once we clean up their gut and really get them functioning better you know, neurologically, we're able to reverse that. Blood sugar, we talked about blood sugar a little bit before, but what we look at, again, is those functional dips, you know, dysglycemia. So, you know, the patient that will really crave sugar or fatigue after they eat or, um, you know, wake up in the middle of the night, even that can be an indication of blood sugar regulation. Some of the other things we see, too, is patients that, you know, they want to work out, but they, they get on the treadmill and they can only work out for 15 minutes and they're shaky and jittery. Blood sugar is extremely important, and I can't tell you how many people I've seen problems that have had problems, despite the fact that they're not diabetic. They have all these functional blood sugar regulation issues. Blood sugar is the number one stressor in the body. So if your blood sugar is imbalanced, it's going to have an impact, large impact on your ability to focus, concentrate, you know, complete tasks, your mood, all of those things. Uh, hypoglycemia versus insulin resistant. So generally, the patients that we see that are hypoglycemic, they're going to crave sweets. They'll be irritable if meals are missed. They can get headaches. Uh, co they use coffee for energy. They eat to relieve fatigue. They get lightheaded. They're shaky and jittery. They're easily upset, poor memory, forgetfulness, blurred vision. I see this a lot in my patient base. Insulin resistance I also see too. So fatiguing after meals, general fatigue, you know, constant hunger, must have sweets after meals. That's something I see commonly in my patient base as well. Waist girth is larger than the hip girth, frequent urination, increased appetite and thirst, difficulty losing weight. Blood sugar is one of the keys to really helping patients function better. Um, and, and largely also fixing the adrenals can help with that too. But one of the things that we work with with blood sugar regulation is that we, we really see as we do that, patients have a lot more energy and they're actually able to lose weight once we manage getting their blood sugar back on track. This is just a nice picture of what we generally see with patients that have blood sugar regulation issues as well as adrenal malfunction. You know, one of the things we see um, with adrenal malfunction is that many patients have, have had emotional stresses. They've had physical stresses such as, let's say, an automobile accident or a fall or an injury, or they've had um, you know, chemical-related stresses such as alcohol, cigarettes, 
um, you know, medications or chemical exposure, those stresses can, in, can actually st start to affect your body and it can start to damage the adrenal glands. The adrenals then produce a hormone called cortisol. That cortisol is toxic to the brain. The brain then starts to become damaged, particularly the area of the temporal lobe, which affects our ability to remember short-term memory. So many of our patients start to see a decline in their brain function, their focus, their memory, concentration, you know, um, decreased motivation and, and ability to complete tasks. That is all common because of all the cellular things that you have going on in your body. Some of the other things we look at are the barrier systems in order to get you well. The skin, you know, the digestive tract, we talked about 80% of the immune system lies in the gut. The respiratory tract, the blood-brain barrier. Uh, the blood-brain barrier is extremely important because it protects your brain against toxins. So again, um, as we work on healing the leaky gut, because the leaky gut is one of the contributors to, that really damages the blood-brain barrier. People that have damage to the blood-brain barrier have symptoms such as brain fog, you know, difficulty focusing, problems with completing tasks, all of these things. And we see this often in our office. So our goal is to really restore these barrier systems to enable the patient to function much better. You know, we, we know that these weaken because of poor diet, unstable blood sugar, gut infections, chronic stress, adrenal malfunction, leaky gut. We can also have a leaky brain as well as leaky lungs. So again, those barrier systems that protect our key organs against damage need to be protected and safeguarded. So that's part of what we do. And we do that you know, by utilizing detoxification in our office. And also we use therapies such as the RIFE, which we'll talk about towards the end. Uh, leaky barriers, again, leaky gut, brain and lung barrier systems. When they're leaking, they allow substances into areas where they shouldn't be. Um, they can create widespread inflammation. Increased cytokines, which, is, which are immune cells or reactions to, to damage, that decreases effectiveness of the thyroid hormones that are available. Basically, it's pouring more gasoline on, fi on the fire. So, you know, many patients that we see, they come in complaining of overall pain, joint pain, gut pain, you know, difficulty focusing, brain fog. That's because their barrier systems are damaged. And so just giving them the thyroid medication isn't going to fix that. We have to really get to the root causes and get, get your body functioning better. So just so you know, there is hope. You know, this, we have successes every day in our office. And that's because we help patients regulate their blood sugar. We help them avoid gluten or any sensitivities that they may have. You know, a lot of patients have cross reactivities. Their, their body, once your body, you know, makes immune responses against gluten, it can also tag other foods that look like gluten, such as millet or rice or potato or soy or egg or dairy products. So it can also tag those other foods. So those foods can equally create, destroy your immune system actually in your body. So we look at the foods, we, we test to be able to determine what foods are causing these problems through Cyrex labs. We treat the body from a functional health model. So again, that's not just looking at the symptoms, that's looking at the underlying dysfunction and really you know, getting those systems back on track. We regulate the immune system to help calm down the unbalanced immune response. We look at the adrenals. We identify and correct the underlying hidden infections and we heal the barrier systems. The other thing we evaluate is the brain. So what tends to suffer as a result of these cellular issues that people have, with, particularly with autoimmunity, is that their brain malfunctions. Their brain doesn't get adequate fuel. It doesn't get ad adequate blood sugar regulation or glucose. It doesn't get adequate oxygen because people tend to not be able to move as much because they're fatigued all the time. And they, it does, they don't get adequate activation. So your brain needs these three things to work properly. 
So when we do a neurological assessment in our office, we look at the brain and we take you through certain exercises and movements. Some of them involve evaluating your balance, your balance, your coordination, your ability to feel things equally on both sides of the body. That tells us if your brain is working well. If your ability to, to feel equally is, what is good, that's a good sign. If you do, can move in a coordinated way, that means your brain is working well. But if your balance is off, your coordination is off, your sensation is off, your um, ability to smell equally, your ability to move your eyes in certain ways, all of that tells us about your brain. And again, these are some of the neurological tests that we do on that first day in our office when we examine you. So we look at the brain, but then we also look at everything else, like I mentioned, you know, blood sugar and all the key things that are really causing your thyroid to malfunction. Once we evaluate you and we determine that, you know, we need to do certain tests to be able to get to the root causes, we also are going to use therapies to help activate the brain. One of them is oxygen, um, exercise with oxygen. That's one of the key things that can really stimulate better function in the brain, improved energy, impro improved concentration, and it gives your brain fuel for healing. We also use detoxification therapies. One of them is, is a Rife machine. And the Rife machine is a light generated machine that we can actually program to kill certain infections. For example, if we find that through testing that you have a yeast infection or a, or a, let's say an H. pylori infection, that we can actually program a frequency that, that yeast doesn't respond well to. In other words, it doesn't thrive on. So as you, you sit next to the Rife machine, it actually generates light beams that actually helps to kill off that yeast infection. Patients really like it and they can see major changes with it. We also like using um, clay packs. So we use um, detoxification therapies such as clay. We, we apply clay to certain parts of your body to help pull out toxins. Uh, along with that, we use something called the foot detoxification, which actually is ionic and it pulls out toxins, um, helps the liver flush, it helps with the gallbladder, and it helps pull out heavy metals. Again, allowing for your immune system to function well, allow you to heal, allow you to feel better while your body is going through this transformation, which is what we do in our office. Um, so again, what you have is a neurological breakdown with metabolic complications. What does that mean? Basically, it means your cells are not working well, they're not getting adequate fuel, they're not getting and then your brain's not getting adequate oxygenation, body's breaking down. We have to look at the whole puzzle here. We've got to get these things back in check in order to address your condition and, and really treat the whole individual. In order to determine if you're a good candidate for, for this type of care, we actually offer you two, two visits. Um, the first visit is an extensive examination. We do a neurological evaluation. We also include some muscle testing, so we may do some acupuncture point testing with you on that day as well. Along with that, we talk with you about your, your case and we evaluate any blood work that you, that you bring in. On the second visit, we sit down with you and your significant other and we review with you what we found. We talk about you know, if we can take your case, first of all, if we think we'll, we can really help you. Um, we'll go through a care plan It'll, it'll include all the labs that we recommend. It'll talk about the length of care that we recommend, any nutritional needs or supplementation needs, along with any financial obligation. So in order to be accepted for care in our office, you have to be committed to your health. You know, we can't make the changes for you. You have to make them with us as we guide you along. On a scale from one to 10, with one being very low and 10 being absolutely yes, we're looking for patients that are absolutely a 10, that, that are completely serious about changing their life. Um, Medicare and secondary insurance only pays a very small portion, if any, of our treatment. So this is an investment in your health and, it's, and you're actively involved in it as well. We, but we have affordable care plans, you know, so that 96% of our patient base who, who would like to receive treatment can. 
uh, for as little as 250 a month for 12 to 18 months. So we have care, plan, uh, care credit that actually allows them to utilize that and actually would, can spread your payments over that period of time. Okay. If you're truly committed to your health and would like to schedule an appointment, what you need to do is call our office to schedule. There's several things that, that we require that you need to do, however. One of them is, is you have to be committed to improving your health, 10 out of 10. Also, all of your paperwork must be received at least one day prior to your scheduled appointment. I am gonna need time to review your paperwork in order to help you. You need to include your most recent blood labs as well. Your spouse or significant other are required to watch the video, watch this video, and attend your second visit recommendation with you. They are encouraged to attend both, so that way they can really support you in this quest to, to improving your health. Um, the way that you can do this is you can go to our website, which is www.synergyfixme.com. You can download your paperwork, and then you can fax it to our office, which is 813-254-5278. That way Nancy can receive it and she can schedule an appointment for you. So if you're serious about changing your life, I highly recommend that you schedule an appointment at our office. Please only schedule though if you truly really want to make a change in your life. We have a very busy office and we can only accommodate so many people. So we really want to you know, bring in the patients that, we, that are really committed to changing their lives. We look forward to seeing you and thank you.